Hello, welcome to Fatigue Analysis for Extreme Environments. I'm Dr. Stewart. Today we're going to cover linear elastic fracture mechanics approach to notches, the two-stage or two-method approach, and then we're going to look at some do's and don'ts for notches and fatigue. Let's start with the linear elastic fracture mechanics approach. This is the approach that deals with fine cracks and structures. And so, in essence, we're asking the question, what happens when fine cracks initiate at notches? Well, let's look at this example here that we have to the right. We've got a plate. It has a notch. It also, uh, within that notch, within that notch, we have a fine crack that has nucleated. So we can see that there's some complexity here. The notch itself has an elastic strain field, stress strain field. It has a plastic stress strain field. And inside of that plastic notch stress strain field, there exists a plastic zone for the crack itself. So clearly, uh, applying something as simple as the theory of elasticity, or even just basic numerical methods, we're going to have a lot of challenge in defining the stress strain fields in such a complex state. Now, uh, what we can find when we do try to apply some LEFEM approaches is that we'll find that short cracks and long cracks behave differently in the presence of notches. To the right here, we have a diagram. And this diagram kind of illustrates the uh, uh, calculation of the stress intensity factors for different states. One line represents the stress intensity factor assuming a very fine, very small fine crack in the vicinity of this notch. The other case, this case here, this other solid line represents the case for a long crack as if we had a very long crack that represents the distance uh, of uh, A in this structure. What we'll find is that relatively short crack lengths, uh, there's an amplification of the stress with short cracks due to the presence of the stress concentration. While in the case for long cracks, if we were to assume a long crack, they are relatively indifferent to the preference to the presence of that notch. So what that means is that cracks that grow through uh, notch stress drain field may represent either a major or minor portion of the total fatigue life. Now for cracks that grow inside of the plastic stress drain field of a notch, fatigue crack growth rates are initially high, but they decrease as the crack grows towards a more longer crack length. Uh, this can be illustrated in the figure to the right, where we're looking at the case of a uh, small crack growing in the notch in the plastic field, right? Versus small cracks growing uh, in the notch in the elastic plastic field. So this is uh, the two cases, right? And we can see that we're starting at an initial high rate that decreases as we approach that stabilized long crack growth behavior that we would expect. Now on the other side, uh, on the, in the other case, if we have small cracks that are growing in an elastic stress strain field of a notch, we often see something similar to a physically small crack, that the presence of that notch does not have as dramatic an impact on crack growth rates. This overall tells us that we want to avoid the growth of small cracks inside of plastic zones of notches, if we can. Now, for cracks that nucleate from shallow or blunt notches, the fatigue crack behavior is often dominated by the nucleation of that crack. Conversely, cracks that nucleate uh, may nucleate uh, quickly in, in the vicinity of sharp notches. And this kind of makes sense. If you've it's almost like creating a starter notch. The notch creates a almost a starter crack for our structure. 
creating a location where stress intensities are high and cracks are likely to nucleate quickly. And for small cracks, contained within the plastic stress strain field of a notch, elastic plastic fracture mechanics may provide at least a partial solution to the difference we see between theory and what actually happens in experiments. Many attempts have been and have been applied to try to deal with this, with this, with the high uh, 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 fatigue crack growth rates that are observed in short cracks inside of plastic zones. Uh, and truthfully, the models that we have available now are, are incomplete. They do not completely capture how these cracks grow, particularly when we're dealing with uh, uh, multi-axial states of stress, complex loading conditions. Now let's move on to the two-stage approach. The two-stage approach is this idea of us separating the crack nucleation process and the fatigue crack propagation process using two different methods. Stage one is to nucleate the crack to an initial size uh, on an order of magnitude of one millimeter. And often the strain life approach is applied to that effect. Stage two is to calculate from some initial flaw size to the critical crack length, what is the cycles to failure or cycles to fracture? In that case, we want to apply linear elastic fracture mechanics. It allows us to do uh, uh, damage tolerant design. So an example of this approach of combining these two concepts is available in our textbook. I really encourage you to go through that process. It combines what we've already done in the previous videos for the strain life, uh, as well as for what we've just talked about, linear elastic fracture mechanics. Now let's summarize uh, the notch effects and list out some do's and don'ts. Some do's and don'ts in design. The notches overall can avoid it, can not be avoided in structures, and it's important for us to uh, take into consideration the notch effect in the design against fatigue. Uh, the fatigue strength of notch members is, is not only affected by the stress concentration, but it also depends on the effect of stress gradients, the effect of mean stress or the presence of residual stresses, local yielding, and the propagation of fine cracks inside, in the vicinity of those notches. The ratio of smooth to notched fatigue strength is called the fatigue notch factor, KF, and this factor depends on the static stress concentration factor as well as a material parameter Q or characteristic lengths. It also uh, is influenced by mean stress and stress amplitude ratios. For zero mean stress and long life, we have a nice, simple empirical equation, and we also have relationships from Weber and Peterson to give us those calculations. In the stress life approach for fully reversed fatigue of notch members, we can either use Hayward or Collins method to approximate the influence of notches. If a mean stress exists, the fatigue strength of the notch member at long life is estimated from either a Haig diagram or using the more convenient modified Goodman equation. The strain life approach involves two steps. First, finding the local, not root stresses and strains using whatever method available, experimental, finite element, or analytical, and then using those local measures and our normal strain life equations to predict cycles to failure. And we found that there are two analytical uh, models uh, of, of notch stress strain. One is Neuber's, the other is Glinka, and we went over those. Neuber's rule has been the most widely used model. It assumes that the geometric mean of the stress and strain concentrations to be equal and at the theor to, to the theoretical stress concentration factor, meaning they, they have a relationship to each other. And this rule generally agrees with measurements in plain stress situations, and it's more conservative than very uh, other rules such as the linear rule. 
Glinker's rule, on the other hand, assumes that the strain energy density at the knot roots is equal uh, for the linear elastic and plastic uh, knot root behaviors. And, and both of these methods, Weber and Glinka, are connected to Ramberg Osgood's equation that allows us to predict our knot root stress strain response, the hysteresis loops uh, in, in uh, those materials. The local stress strain field of a notch has a large influence on crack growth behavior. Uh, uh, and that pertains to this the effect of cracks nucleating inside of the plastic zone. And lastly, we talked about the two-stage approach, which is this idea of separating fatigue life into a nucleation stage using the strain life method and a crack propagation stage using linear elastic fracture mechanics. Let's do recognize that the theoretical stress concentration factor KT only depends on geometry and loading. It can only be used to relate the notch stress to nominal stresses for linear elastic notch deformation. Let's do consider the effect of stress state, stress gradients, and notches, and let's do recognize that the fatigue strength of notch parts not only depends on the part geometry and loading, but also on the material's notch sensitivity. The stronger the material, the higher that notch sensitivity. Let's do expect the effect of mean stress uh, to have an, an impact in our notched parts. Let's do recognize the significance of the plastic deformation and how that has an impact on our material's life prediction. And let's do recognize that fatigue crack growth from a notch can represent either a major or minor portion of its fato total fatigue life. Now, now that we've finished our review of notches, uh, let's go ahead and highlight a couple of, of problems that we can do from the textbook, uh, 7.6, 7.13, B, D, and H, and 7.22. Again, uh, my name is Dr. Stewart. Uh, I'm an associate professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Texas at El Paso.